book two chapter five of the mystical city of god volume two by the venerable sister mary of jesus of agreda this librivox recording is in the public domain book two chapter five saint joseph resolves to devote himself entirely to the service of most holy mary the behavior of her majesty and other particulars of the life of mary and joseph the most faithful Joseph, after being informed of the mystery and sacrament of the Incarnation, was filled with such high and befitting sentiments concerning his spouse, that although he had always been holy and perfect, he was changed into a new man. He resolved to act toward the heavenly lady according to a new rule and with greater reverence, as I will relate farther on. This was conformable to the wisdom of the saint and due to the excellence of his spouse, for saint joseph by heavenly enlightenment saw well that he was the servant and she the mistress of heaven and earth in order to satisfy his desire for honoring and reverencing her as the mother of god whenever he passed her or spoke to her alone he did it with great external veneration and on bended knees he would not allow her to serve him or wait upon him or perform any other humble services such as cleaning the house or washing the dishes and the like all these things the most happy spouse wished to do himself in order not to derogate from the dignity of the queen but the heavenly lady who among the humble was the most humble and whom no one could surpass in humility so managed all these things that the palm of victory in all these virtues always remained with her she besought saint joseph not to bend the knees to her for though this worship was due to the lord whom she carried in her womb yet as long as he was within unseen by any one no distinction was externally manifest between his and her own person the saint therefore allowed himself to be persuaded and conformed to the wishes of the queen of heaven only at times when she was not looking he continued to give this worship to the lord whom she bore in her womb and also to her as his mother intending thereby to honor both according to the excellence of each in regard to the other works and services a humble contention arose between them for saint joseph could not overcome his conviction as to the impropriety of allowing the great queen and lady to perform them and therefore he sought to be beforehand with such household duties his heavenly spouse was filled with the same eagerness to seize upon occasions in advance of saint joseph as however he busied himself in these duties during the time which she spent in contemplation he frustrated her continual desire of serving him and of performing all the duties of the household which she considered as belonging to her as a servant in her affliction on this account the heavenly lady turned to the lord with humble complaints and besought him to oblige saint joseph not to hinder her in the exercise of humility as she desired as this virtue is so powerful before the divine tribunal and has free access no prayer accompanied by it is small humility makes all prayers effective and inclines the immutable being of god to clemency he heard her petition and he ordered the angel guardian of the blessed husband to instruct him as follows do not frustrate the humble desires of her who is supreme over all the creatures of heaven and earth exteriorly allow her to serve thee and interiorly treat her with highest reverence and at all times and in all places worship the incarnate word it is his will equally with that of the heavenly mother to serve and not to be served in order to teach the world the knowledge of life and the excellence of humility in some of the work thou canst assist her but always reference in her the lord of all creation instructed by this command of the most high saint joseph permitted the heavenly princess to exercise her humility and so both of them were enabled to make an offering of their will to god the most holy mary by exercising the deepest humility and obedience toward her spouse in all her acts of virtue which she performed without failing in the least point of perfection and saint joseph by obeying the almighty with a holy and prudent embarrassment which was occasioned by seeing himself waited upon and served by her whom he had recognized as his mistress and that of the world and as the mother of his god and creator in this manner the prudent saint made up for the humility which he could not practice in the works now consigned to his spouse 
this arrangement seemed to humiliate him more and filled him with a greater reverential fear in this fear he observed most holy mary always bearing in mind the treasure of her virginal womb and adoring magnifying and praising the lord a few times in reward of his holiness and reverence or for the increase of both the infant god manifested himself to him in a wonderful manner he saw him in the womb of his purest mother enclosed as it were in the clearest crystal the sovereign queen conversed with the glorious saint concerning the incarnation because she did not need to be so reserved in her heavenly words since he had been enlightened and instructed in the sublime sacraments of the hypostatic union of the divine and human natures in the virginal chamber of his spouse no human tongue can reproduce the celestial words and conversations of the most holy mary and the blessed joseph i will adduce some of them in the following chapters as far as i know how yet who can declare the effects wrought in the sweet and devout heart of this saint in seeing himself not only constituted the husband of her who was the true mother of his creator but in finding himself also served by her as if she were the humblest slave while at the same time he beheld her raised in sanctity and dignity above the highest seraphim and inferior only to god if the divine right hand enriched with blessings the house of obedidom for having sheltered for a few months the figurative ark of the old testament first paralipomenon chapter thirteen verse fourteen what blessings did he not shower upon saint joseph to whom he entrusted the true ark and the lawgiver himself enshrined in her incomparable was the good fortune and happiness of this saint not only because he had with him in his house the living and true ark of the new testament the altar the sacrifice and the temple all left in his charge but also because he cared for them worthily and as a faithful servant matthew chapter twenty four verse forty five constituted by the lord himself over his family to provide all their necessities in the right time as a most faithful dispenser hosea chapter fourteen verse twenty let all generations and peoples acknowledge and bless him let them extol his merits since the most high has favored none other in the same degree i an unworthy and poor worm in the light of such venerable sacraments exalt and magnify this lord god confessing him as holy just merciful wise and admirable in the disposition of all his great works the humble but blessed house of joseph contained three rooms which nearly occupied all its space and formed the exclusive dwelling-place of the two spouses for they kept neither man nor maid servant in one of the rooms saint joseph slept in another he worked and kept the tools of his trade of carpentering the third was ordinarily occupied by the queen of heaven and was also her sleeping room it contained a couch made by the hands of saint joseph this arrangement they had observed since their espousal and from the day on which they had come to this their dwelling before knowing the dignity of his spouse and lady saint joseph rarely went to see her for while she kept her retirement he was engaged in his work unless some affair made it absolutely necessary to consult her but after he was informed of his good fortune the holy man was more solicitous for her welfare and in order to renew the joy of his heart he began to come often to the retreat of the sovereign lady visiting her and receiving her commands but he always approached her with extreme humility and reverential fear and before he spoke to her he was careful to note in what she was engaged many times he saw her in ecstasy raised from the earth and resplendent with most brilliant light at other times in the company of her angels holding celestial intercourse with them and at other times he found her prostrate upon the earth in the form of a cross speaking to the lord her most fortunate spouse was a participator in these favors but whenever he found the great lady in these occupations and postures he would presume no farther than to look upon her with profound reverence and thereby he merited sometimes to hear the sweetest harmony of the celestial music with which the angels regaled their queen and perceived a wonderful fragrancy which comforted him and filled him entirely with jubilation and joy of spirit the two holy spouses lived alone in their house for as i have said they have no servants of any kind not only on account of their humility 
but in order more fittingly to hide from any witnesses the wonders which passed between them and which were not to be communicated to outsiders likewise the princess of heaven did not leave her dwelling except for very urgent causes in the service of god or her fellow men whenever anything was necessary she asked that fortunate neighbor who as i have said had served saint joseph during the absence of mary in the house of zacharias this woman received such a good return from mary not only she herself became most holy and perfect but her whole household and family was blessed by the help of the queen and mistress of the world she was visited by most holy mary in some of her sicknesses and with her family was copiously enriched by the blessings of heaven never did saint joseph see his heavenly spouse asleep nor did he of his own experience know whether she ever slept although he besought her to take some rest especially during the time of her sacred pregnancy the resting place of the princess was the low couch which i said had been constructed by saint joseph and on it were the coverings which served her during her brief and holy sleep her undergarment was a sort of tunic made of cotton but softer than the ordinary or common cloth this tunic she never changed from the time since she left the temple nor did it wear out or grow old or soiled and no person ever saw it nor did saint joseph know that she wore that kind of garment for he never saw any other part of her clothing except the outside garments which were open to the view of other persons those were of a gray color as i have said and these only and her head coverings were the garments which the queen changed now and then not because they were soiled but because being visible to all she wished to avoid notice by such strange sameness of outward appearance nothing that she wore upon her most pure and virginal body became soiled or worn for she neither perspired nor was she subject to the punishments which are laid upon the sin impregnated bodies of the children of adam she was in all respects most pure and the works of her hands were like crystal ornaments and with the same purity she cared for the clothes and other necessities of saint joseph the food of which she partook was most limited in kind and quantity but she partook of some every day and in the company of her spouse she never ate meat although he did and she prepared it for him her sustenance was fruit fishes and ordinarily bread and cooked vegetables but of all these she partook in exact measure and weight only so much as was necessary for the nourishment of the body and the maintaining of the natural warmth without any superfluities that could pass over into excess of harmful corruption the same rule she observed in regard to drink although her fervent acts of love often caused a superabundance of preternatural ardor this rule as to the quantity of her nourishment she followed during her whole life although as to the kind of food she adapted herself to the various circumstances demanding a change as i shall relate farther on in all things the most pure mary exhibited consummate perfection without any fault or want of grace and all her actions both in the natural and the supernatural order reached the pinnacle of excellence but words fail me in describing it for i am never satisfied seeing how far short these words fall of that which i perceive and how much more excellence this sublime creature possesses than i can express continually i am grieved by my insufficiency and dissatisfied with my limited terms and descriptions fearing lest i presume more than i should in striving to do that which so far exceeds my powers but the force of obedience inspires me with i don't know what sweet strength which dispels my hesitancy and impels my backwardness encouraging me to face the greatness of my undertaking and the smallness of my ability i work under obedience and through it i hope to make great gains it will also serve me as an excuse instruction given me by the queen of heaven most holy mary my daughter in the school of humility which my whole life affords thee i wish that thou be studious and diligent and this should be thy first and principal care if thou wishest to enjoy the sweet embraces of the lord assure thyself of his favor and possess the treasures of light which are hidden to the proud matthew chapter eleven verse twenty five for without the trusty foundation of humility such treasures cannot be confided to any man let all thy ambition be to humble thyself in thy own estimation and thought 
so that in thy exterior actions thou mayest truly exhibit this humility of thy interior it must be a subject of confusion and a spur of humility for thee and for all the souls to have the lord as their father and spouse to see that the presumption and pride of worldly wisdom is more powerful in its devotees than humility and true self-knowledge is in the children of light consider the watchfulness the untiring study and care of ambitious and aspiring men look upon their struggle to be esteemed in the world their strivings never at rest though so vain and worthless how they conduct themselves outwardly according to the false notions which they have of themselves how they pretend to be what they are not and how they exert themselves to obtain through false pretenses the treasures which though only earthly they do not deserve hence it should be a cause of confusion and shame to the good that deceit should urge on the sons of perdition with greater force than truth urges the elect that the number of those who in the world are anxious to strive in the service of their god and creator should be so small in comparison with the number of those who serve vanity that there should be so few of the elect though all are called matthew chapter twenty verse sixteen seek therefore my daughter to make progress in this science of humility and to gain for thyself the palm of victory in this virtue in the midst of the children of darkness in opposition to their pride study what i did in order to overcome darkness in this world by the pursuit of humility in this the lord and i desire thee to be very wise and proficient never miss an occasion of exercising humility and allow no one to deprive thee of such works and if occasions of humility fail thee and are scarce seek after them and ask god to send them to you for it pleases his majesty to see such kind of anxiety and ambition in what he desires so much for the sake of his divine complacency alone thou as a daughter of his house as his domestic and as his spouse shouldst be solicitous and anxious for acts of humility for in this human ambition itself will teach thee not to be negligent observe how a woman in her house and family conducts herself in order to benefit and advance her family and how she loses no chance of advancing it nothing seems too much for her and if anything no matter how small it is goes to loss luke chapter fifteen verse eight she becomes much excited all this is the effect of worldly covetousness and there is certainly no reason that the wisdom of heaven be less fruitful or less careful in the gifts received therefore i desire thee to allow no carelessness or forgetfulness concerning what so much concerns thee and to lose no occasion of practising humility and labouring for the glory of the lord but do thou seek and strive after his gifts and draw merits from them as a faithful daughter and spouse then wilt thou find grace in the eyes of the Lord and in mine, according to thy desire. End of chapter 5some of the sayings and conversations of most holy mary and joseph regarding divine things other wonderful events before saint joseph had been instructed in the mystery of the incarnation the princess of heaven made use of opportune occasions for reading to him some of the passages of holy scripture especially from the prophets and from the psalms as a most wise teacher she also explained them to him and her holy spouse who was indeed capable of the exalted truths contained therein, asked her many questions, wondering at and consoling himself with the heavenly answers of his spouse, and thus both of them alternately praised and blessed the Lord. But after he had himself become instructed in the great sacrament, he conversed with our queen, as with one, who was herself to be the coadjutrix of the admirable works and mysteries of our redemption for now they could more openly and clearly discuss the divine prophecies and oracles concerning the conception of the word through a virgin mother of his birth his upbringing and his most holy life 
all these things her highness discussed and explained delineating beforehand the course of action which they were to pursue when the long for day of the birth of the child should have arrived when she should hold him in her arms nourish him at her breast with virginal milk and when the holy spouse himself should share in this greatest of mortal blessedness only of his passion and death and of the sayings of isaiah and jeremiah the most prudent queen spoke more rarely for as her spouse was of a most kind and tender heart she thought it best not to dilate upon or anticipate that which he himself remembered of the sayings of the ancient writers concerning the coming and the sufferings of the messias the most prudent virgin also waited until the lord should grant more particular revelation of what was to happen or until she herself would know better the divine will in this respect her most faithful and blessed husband was wholly inflamed by her sweet words and conversations and with tears of joy he said to the heavenly spouse is it possible that in thy most chaste arms i shall see my god and redeemer that i shall hear him speak and touch him and that my eyes shall look upon his divine face and that the sweat of my brow shall be so blessed as to be poured out in his service and for his sustenance that he shall live with us and that we shall eat with him at the same table and that we shall speak and converse with him whence comes to me this good fortune which nobody can ever deserve oh how much do i regret that i am so poor would i possess the richest palaces for his entertainment and many treasures to offer him and the sovereign queen answered my master and spouse there is abundant reason that thy desires extend to all things possible for the reception of thy creator but this great god and lord does not wish to enter into the world in the pomp of ostentatious riches and royal majesty he has need of none of these psalm fifteen verse two nor does he come from heaven for such vanities he comes to redeem the world and to guide men on the path of eternal life john chapter ten verse ten and this is to be done by means of humility and poverty in these he wishes to be born live and die in order to destroy in the hearts of men the fetters of covetousness and pride which keep them from blessedness on this account he chose our poor and humble house and desired us not to be rich in apparent deceitful and transitory goods which are but vanities of vanities and affliction of spirit ecclesiastes chapter one verse twenty four and which oppress and obscure the understanding at other times the saint asked the most pure lady to teach him the nature and essence of virtues especially of the love of god in order that he might know how to behave toward the most high become man and in order that he might not be rejected as a useless and incapable servant the queen and teacher of virtues complied with these requests and explained to him the nature of true virtues and the manner of exercising them in all perfection but in these discourses she proceeded with so much humility and discretion that she did not appear as the teacher of her spouse though such she was but she managed to give her information under the guise of conversation or in addressing the lord or at other times asking questions of st joseph which of themselves suggested the information in all circumstances she knew how to preserve her most profound humility without permitting even the least gesture not in accordance with it these alternate discourses or readings from the holy scriptures they interrupted by manual labor as occasion required not only was the hard and tiresome labor of st joseph lightened by the admirable words of sympathy of our lady but in her rare discretion she also knew how to add instruction so that his manual labor became more an exercise of virtue than a work of his hands the mildest dove with the prudence of a most wise virgin administered her consolations by pointing out the most blessed fruits of labor in her estimation she held herself unworthy of being supported by her spouse and she felt herself in continual debt to the sweat of st joseph as one who is receiving a great alms and most generous gift all these considerations caused in her sentiments of deepest obligation as if she were the most useless creature on earth therefore though she could not assist the saint in his trade since that was above the strength of women and unbecoming the modesty and retirement of the heavenly queen 
yet in all that was befitting her she served him as a humble handmaid since her discreet humility and thankfulness would not suffer any less return for the faithful services of saint joseph among other wonderful happenings in connection with his intercourse with most holy mary during these days of her pregnancy saint joseph one day saw many birds flocking around her in order to pay their respect to the queen and mistress of all creatures they surrounded her as if to form a choir and raised up their voices in songs of sweet harmony not less wonderful than their visits to the heavenly lady saint joseph had never seen this wonder until that day and full of admiration and joy he said to his sovereign spouse is it possible my mistress that these simple birds and irrational creatures should understand and fulfil their obligations better than i surely it is reasonable that if they recognize serve and reverence thee according to their powers that thou allow me to perform that which in duty i am bound to do the most pure virgin answered him my master in the behaviour of these little birds the creator offers us a powerful motive worthily to employ all our strength and faculties in his praise just as they recognize and acknowledge their creator in my womb i however am but a creature and therefore i deserve no veneration nor is it right that i accept it it is my duty to induce all creatures to praise the most high since he has looked upon me his handmaid and has enriched me with the treasures of the divinity luke chapter one verse forty eight it happened also not a few times that the heavenly lady and her spouse found themselves so poor and destitute of means that they were in want of the necessaries of life for they were most liberal in their gifts to the poor and they were never anxious to store up beforehand food or clothing as is wont with the children of this world in their faint-hearted covetousness matthew chapter six verse twenty five the lord so disposed things that the faith and patience of his most holy mother and of saint joseph should not be in vain for this indigence was a source of incomparable consolation to our lady not only because of her love of poverty but also on account of her astonishing humility she considered herself unworthy of the sustenance of life and that she above all others should suffer the want of it therefore she blessed the lord for this poverty as far as it affected her while she asked the most high to supply the needs of saint joseph as being a just and holy man and well worthy of this favor of the almighty the lord did not forget his poor entirely psalm seventy three verse nineteen for while he permitted them to exercise virtues and gain merits he also gave them nourishment in opportune time psalm one hundred forty four verse fifteen this his providence provided in various ways sometimes he moved the hearts of their neighbors and acquaintances to bring some gratuitous gift or pay some debt at other times and more ordinarily saint elizabeth sent them assistance from her home for ever since she had harbored in her house the queen of heaven this devoted matron insisted on sending them a gift from time to time which the humble princess always acknowledged by sending in return some work of her hands on some occasions for the greater glory of the most high the blessed lady availed herself of the power given to her as the mistress of all creation then she would command the birds of the air to bring some fishes from the sea or fruits of the field and they would fulfil her commands to the point sometimes they would also bring bread in their beaks which the lord had furnished them many times the most fortunate spouse saint joseph was a witness to all these happenings also in other necessities they were on some occasions succored by the holy angels in an admirable manner in order properly to understand some of the great miracles which happened through the ministry of the angels to most holy mary and joseph it is necessary to take into account the magnanimity and generous faith of the saint for these virtues were so great in him that not even the shadow of covetousness or greediness could find entrance into his soul although he labored for others as did also his heavenly spouse yet never did they ask for any wages or set a price on their work asking payment therefore they performed all their work not for gain but in obedience to a request or for charity leaving the payment of wages entirely in the hands of their employers and accepting it not as a just return for their labors but as a freely given alms 
this is the perfection of sanctity which saint joseph learnt from the heavenly example given to him in his house by the most holy virgin owing to this circumstance that he was not paid for his work it happens sometimes that they were in total want of food and sustenance until the lord would provide for them one day it came to pass that the hour set for their meal passed without their having anything in the house to eat they persevered in prayer until very late giving thanks to the lord for this privation and hoping that he would open his all-powerful hand psalm 144 verse 16 in the meanwhile the holy angels prepared the meal and placed upon the table some fruit the whitest bread and fishes also especially a sort of preserve or jelly of wonderful and nourishing sweetness then some of the angels went to call their queen and others called saint joseph her spouse each came forth from their separate retirement and perceiving the regal mint provided by heaven they thanked the most high in tears of fervent gratitude and partook of the food and afterwards they broke out in exalted songs of praise of the almighty many other similar events came to pass almost daily in the house of most holy mary and her spouse for as they were alone and as there was no need of hiding these wonders from witnesses the lord did not hesitate to perform them for his beloved who were entrusted with cooperation in the most wonderful of all the works of his powerful arm i wish merely to remark that when i say mary sang canticles of praise either she by herself or in the company of saint joseph or the holy angels new songs are meant such as saint anne sang the mother of samuel or moses ezekias and other prophets when they were visited by great blessings of the lord if all the canticles first book of kings chapter two verse one deuteronomy chapter thirty two verse one etc which the queen of heaven composed and sang would have been recorded there would be a large volume of them the contents of which would excite unheard of wonder in this world teaching vouchsafed me by the same queen and lady much beloved daughter i wish that the science of the lord be many times renewed in thee and that thou acquire the knowledge of the voice wisdom chapter one verse seven so that thou mayest know and let all mortals know the dangerous deceit and perverse estimation in which they as lovers of falsehood hold the temporal and visible goods psalm four verse four how many men are not fascinated by their unbounded greed all of them ordinarily stake their hopes on gold and material riches and in order to increase them they exert all the forces of their natural being thus they spend all the time of their life which was given them in order to gain eternal rest and happiness in these vanities they lose themselves in these dark labyrinths and mazes as if they knew nothing of god and of his providence for they do not think of asking him for that which they desire and do not moderate their desires in such a way as will dispose them to ask and hope for what they desire at his hands thus they lose all because they confide in the lying and deceitful prospects of their own efforts this blind greed is the root of all evils first letter to saint timothy chapter six verse twenty for the lord incensed at such great perversity permits the mortals to be entangled in the vile slavery of avarice in which their understanding is darkened and their will hardened soon the most high for greater punishment withdraws his kindly care as from creatures so detestable and denies them his paternal protection thus letting them fall into what is the deepest misfortune that can befall man in this life although it is true that nothing can hide itself from the eyes of the lord psalm 138 verse 6 yet when the transgressors and enemies of his law offend him they forfeit the kind attention and care of his providence and are left to their own desires psalm 80 verse 13 they cease to experience the paternal foresight shown toward those who trust in the lord those that confide in their own efforts and in the gold which they can touch and feel will reap the fruit of their hopes but just as far as the divine essence and power is distant from the lowliness and limitation of mortals so far also the results of human covetousness are distant from the help and protection of eternal providence shown to the humble who trust in it psalm seventeen verse thirty one 
upon these his majesty looks with kindest love delights in them nourishes them at his breast and attends to their wishes and wants i and my holy spouse joseph were poor and at times we suffered great wants but none of them were powerful enough to engender within our hearts the contagion of avarice we concerned ourselves entirely with the glory of the most high relying wholly on his most faithful and tender care this was what pleased him so much as thou hast understood and written since he supplied our wants in various manners even commanding the angels to help us and prepare for us our nourishment i do not wish to say that the mortals should yield to laziness and negligence on the contrary it is just that all should labor psalm forty eight verse seven and doing nothing is also a great and very reprehensible fault neither leisure nor solicitude must be disorderly nor should the creature trust in his own strength nor should he smother the divine love in anxiety nor seek more than is necessary for a temperate life neither should he fear that the divine providence will fail to supply what is necessary nor should he be troubled or lose hope when the creator seems to delay his assistance in the same way he that is in abundance should not lay aside all exertion ecclesiasticus chapter thirty one verse eight and forget that he is a man subject to labor and travail thus riches as well as poverty must be attributed to god and made use of in a holy and legitimate way for the glory of the creator and ruler of all things if men would observe this rule of action nobody would be without the assistance of the lord who is a true father and neither would the poor be led into sin by poverty nor the rich by prosperity of thee my daughter i require the practice of these rules and through thee i wish to inculcate them on other mortals thou must especially impress this doctrine upon all thy subjects telling them not to be troubled or faint-hearted because of the wants they suffer nor inordinately solicitous about their eating or clothing matthew chapter six verse twenty five but that they confide in the most high and in his providence for if they correspond to his love i assure them that they shall never suffer from the want of what is necessary exhort them also to let their words and conversations continually turn about holy and divine things engaging in the praise and exaltation of the lord according to the teachings of the bible and holy writings let their conversations be in heaven letter to the philippians chapter three verse twenty with the most high and with me who am their mother and superior and let it be with the angels imitating them in holy love end of chapter six book two chapter seven of the mystical city of god volume two by the venerable sister mary of jesus of agreda this librivox recording is in the public domain book two chapter seven the most holy mary prepares the swaddling clothes and the linens for the divine infant with ardent longings to see it born the divine pregnancy of the mother of the eternal word had already far advanced although she knew that the necessary coverings and linens for the time of her parturition must be provided she wished to proceed in all things with the fullness of heavenly prudence therefore fulfilling all requirements of an obedient and faithful handmaid she presumed to arrange nothing without the permission and consent of the lord and of her holy spouse although she could have acted for herself in such matters as pertain to her office of chosen mother and of her most holy son she would not undertake anything without speaking to st joseph therefore she said to him my master it is time that we prepare the things necessary for the birth of my most holy son although his majesty wishes to be treated as one of the children of men humiliating himself and suffering with them yet it is just that we acknowledge him as our god and as our true king and lord by rendering him our devoted service and by making careful provision for his wants as an infant if thou give me permission i will begin to prepare the coverings and linens for his protection and shelter i have already woven with my own hands a piece of linen which may serve as his first swaddling clothes 
and do thou my master seek to procure some woolen cloth of a soft texture and a humble colour from which i may prepare other coverings and later on i will weave a seamless tunic appropriate for him in order to avoid any mistake let us offer special prayers asking his highness to govern and direct us in the right way so that we may know his will and fulfil his pleasure my spouse and my lady answered saint joseph if it were possible to serve with my own heart blood my lord and god and thus fulfil thy commands i would be willing to shed it amid most atrocious torments and as i cannot do this would that i had great riches to buy the most costly textures in order to offer them to thee on this occasion do thou give thy orders as thou seest fit for i will serve thee as thy servant both of them betook themselves to prayer and each separately heard the answer of the lord repeating what the sovereign queen had already heard many times and which now was said in her hearing and that of saint joseph i have come from heaven to the earth in order to exalt humility and discredit pride to honour poverty and condemn riches to destroy vanity and establish truth and in order to enhance worthily the value of labour therefore it is my will that exteriorly you treat me according to the humble position which i have assumed as if i were the natural child of both of you and that interiorly you acknowledge me as the son of my eternal father and bestow the reverence and love due to me as the man god encouraged by this divine voice to seek the wisest course in the rearing of the infant god most holy mary and joseph conferred with each other in what way they might conceal the most noble and perfect worship which was ever given to the true god by his creatures beneath the treatment which in the eyes of the world was due to a natural child of them both for this was to be the opinion of the world and such a conduct the lord himself had enjoined upon them having therefore come to an agreement they lived up to this command of the lord in such perfection that they were the admiration of all heaven and further on i will say more of this they both concluded that according to the limited means allowed them by their poverty they were to expend whatever they could afford in the service of the infant god without going into excess or failing in anything for the sacrament of the king was to be concealed in humble poverty though at the same time they wished to exercise their burning love as far as was possible saint joseph in exchange for some of his work accepted two pieces of woolen cloth such as his heavenly spouse had described the one white the other mulberry colored mixed with gray both of them of the best quality he could find of these the heavenly queen made the first little dresses of her most holy son while she prepared the swathing clothes and shirts from the piece of linen which she herself had spun and woven being woven by such hands it was a most delicate piece of cloth she had commenced work upon it from the day of her entrance into their house at nazareth for she had intended it for the temple as a present although it could now serve for a much higher purpose nevertheless she offered whatever remained of it after she had completed the furnishings of the infant god as a gift to the temple of jerusalem according to her original intention all the articles and coverings necessary for her divine infant the great lady prepared with her own hands and while she sewed and trimmed them she shed tears of ineffable devotion remaining continually on her knees saint joseph gathered such flowers and herbs as he could from which together with other aromatic materials the zealous mother extracted fragrant essences with these she sprinkled the sacred vestments of the victim of sacrifice which she awaited then she folded and laid them away in a chest in which she afterwards took them along with her as i shall relate farther on all these doings of the princess of heaven are to be thought of and estimated not as being without life nude and bare as i here represent them but of incomparable grace and loveliness full of sanctity and exalted merit of a greater perfection than human intellect can comprehend because she performed all these works as the mother of wisdom and as the queen of all virtues in preparing for the appearance of the most holy humanity of her son in this world she celebrated the dedication of the living temple of god the sovereign queen understood better than all the rest of creation the ineffable greatness of the mystery of the incarnation of god and of his coming into the world not in spirit of doubt 
but inflamed by love and veneration she repeated many times the words of solomon when he built the temple how is it possible that god should dwell with men on earth if all the heavens and the heaven of heavens cannot comprehend thee how can this human body contain thee which is formed in my womb but if the temple of solomon which served only as a place in which god should hear the prayers within it was built and dedicated with such lavish expenditure of gold silver treasures and sacrifices what should not the mother of the true solomon do for the building up and the dedication of the living temple letter to the colossians chapter two verse nine where was to dwell the plenitude of the true divinity the eternal and incomprehensible god all these innumerable sacrifices and treasures of the figurative temple most holy mary duplicated not in gold silver or rich texture since god sought no such riches in the living temple but in heroic virtues and in canticles of praise by which she fructified and extolled the graces and gifts of the most high she offered up the sacrifice of her burning love and ransacked all the holy writings for hymns canticles and psalms to praise and magnify this mystery adding thereto the expression of her own exalted sentiments in a mystical and yet altogether real manner she fulfilled the ancient figures and types by her virtues and by her interior and her exterior acts she called upon and invited all the creatures to praise their god to give honor and glory to their creator and place the hope of their sanctification in his coming into the world in many of these exercises the most fortunate and blessed joseph her spouse took part no human tongue can describe and no created understanding can reach the sublime height of merit which the princess of heaven attained and the degree of pleasure and complacency which they afforded the most high if the least degree of grace which any creature merits by an act of virtue is more valuable than all the created universe what treasures of grace did she not gain whose acts exceeded in value not only all the sacrifices offerings and holocausts of the old law and all the merits of the human race but far excelled also those of the highest seraphim the loving extremes of the heavenly lady in hoping to look upon her son and true god to receive him in her arms nourish him at her breast tend him with her own hands converse with him and serve him and adore him made man from her own flesh reached such a pass that in the ardors of love she would have breathed forth her spirit and had been consumed if she had not been preserved from dissolution assisted and strengthened by the miraculous intervention of that same god yes many times she would have lost her life if it had not been preserved by her most holy son for many times she saw him in her virginal womb and with divine clearness she saw his humanity united to his divinity observed the interior acts of that most holy soul the conditions and postures of his body the prayers offered up by him for her for saint joseph for all the human race and especially for the predestined all these and other mysteries were open to her and in perceiving them she was altogether inflamed with the desire of imitating and exalting him since she bore within her the devouring fires which illumine yet do not consume exodus chapter three verse two amidst this conflagration of divine love she spoke sometimes to her most holy son my sweetest love creator of the universe when shall my eyes enjoy the light of thy divine countenance when shall my arms be consecrated as the altar of the victim which is awaited by the eternal father when shall i kiss the earth trodden by thy divine feet and when shall i as thy mother gain the coveted kiss of my beloved canticles chapter one verse one so that i may inhale thy own spirit from the flow of thy breath when shall thou the inaccessible light the true god of the true god light of the light john chapter one verse nine manifest thyself to us mortals after so many ages of concealment from our view when shall the children of adam laden with the guilt of their sins know their redeemer baruch chapter three verse thirty eight see their salvation welcome in their midst their teacher their brother and their true father o light of my soul my strength my beloved for whom dying i live 
son of my womb how can i fulfil the office of a mother since i know not how to fulfil the duties nor merit the name of even a slave how shall i be able to treat thee worthily who am a vile and insignificant poor worm how can i serve and administer to thee since thou art sanctity itself and infinite goodness and i only dust and ashes how can i dare to speak before thee or stand in thy presence do thou master of my being who hast chosen me the little one among the other daughters of adam govern my conduct direct my desires and inflame my affections in order that i may please thee with all my powers and what shall i do my only delight since thou art to issue from my womb into the world in order to suffer affronts and death for the human race if at the same time i shall not be allowed to die with thee and accompany thee in thy sacrifice since thou art my life and my being let the same cause and motive that brings about thy death bring about also mine for they are united as if they were one and the same less than thy death will suffice to save the world yes thousands of worlds let me die instead of thee and let me suffer thy ignominies while thou by thy love and light sanctify the world and enlighten the darkness of mortals and if it is not possible to revoke the decree of the eternal father which requires that redemption to be abundant letter to the ephesians chapter two verse four and thy excessive charity be satisfied looking graciously upon my desires and let me take part in all the labors of thy life since thou art my son and lord the variety of these and other sweetest sentiments of love uttered by the queen made her most beautiful in the eyes of the prince of the eternities esther chapter two verse nine who was enshrined in the virginal chamber of her womb all her interior movements were conformable to the actions of that most sacred and deified humanity for as a worthy mother of such a son she closely observed them as models for her imitation sometimes the infant god would place himself on his knees in order to pray to the father or assume the position of one crucified as if in order to exercise himself therein beforehand from that retirement as even now from the highest throne in heaven he looked upon and comprehended by the science of his most holy soul all that he knows even at this day and no creatures of the present past or future with all their thoughts and actions was hidden from his view to all things he attended as the lord and redeemer since these mysteries were manifest also to his heavenly mother and since she was also endowed with all the graces and gifts necessary for acting in concert with him she brought forth such great fruits of sanctity that no human words can ever describe them but if we were not perverted in our judgments and if we were not hardened as stone we would find it impossible at the sight and experience of these vast and admirable works to remain untouched by loving sorrow and thankful acknowledgment instruction which mary the most holy queen gave me the lesson of this chapter my daughter should be that thou bear in mind with what reverence thou must handle all the things consecrated and devoted to the divine service and at the same time estimate how reprehensible is the irreverence with which the ministers of the lord offend in their disregard for the sacred objects they should not forget or slight the indignation of his majesty against them for the gross discourtesy and ingratitude with which they ordinarily show by handling the sacred ornaments and objects of worship without attention and respect and much greater is the anger of the lord against those who possess the incomes or stipends of his most sacred blood if they waste and squander them in vile vanities and indecent profanities they seek for their sustenance and convenience what is most costly and valuable while for the honor and worship of the lord they are satisfied with what is most cheap common and ordinary when this happens especially in regard to the linens which touch the body and blood of my most holy son such as corporals and purificators i wish thee to understand that the holy angels that assist at the most exalted and sublime sacrifice are as it were struck with horror and cover their eyes at the sight full of astonishment that the most high bears with them and suffers such boldness and presumption although not all offend in this way yet there are many and few distinguish themselves in outward respect and care at the divine cult 
or treat the sacred objects with due reverence. They are the smaller number, and even they do not all have the pure intention, not observing this due respect out of reverence, but out of vanity and for other human ends. Thus they who adore and worship their Creator in the spirit of truth, and with a pure and upright intention, have become very scarce. Consider, my dearest, what should be our sentiments, when on the one hand we reflect on the incomprehensible being of God, who in his goodness has created us for his honor and worship, establishing this as the very law of our nature and of all the created universe, and when, on the other hand, we see with what ingratitude men correspond to the gifts of the most liberal creator by withholding from his service the very things intended for it, reserving for their own vanities the most costly and valuable, and applying for their creator only the most valueless and despicable of the world. This fault is little thought of and recognized, and therefore I wish not only that thou deplore it with true sorrow, but also that thou make reparation for it, as far as possible, during the time in which thou art superioress. Give to the Lord of the best, and instruct thy religious, that they attend with a sincere and devout heart, to the keeping in order, and the cleaning of sacred articles, and this, not only for their own convent, but also by seeking to furnish other poor churches, with the corporal's investments of which they stand in need. Let them be convinced, that the Lord will repay their holy zeal for his worship, and that he will relieve their poverty and the necessities of their convent like a father, and that thereby it will never become poorer. This is the most appropriate occupation and legitimate business of the spouses of Christ, and in this they ought to consume their time, which may remain after fulfilling the obligations of the choir and other duties of obedience. If all the religious would busy themselves purposely in these honorable, praiseworthy, and agreeable occupations, they would never suffer any want, and they would maintain an angelic existence in this life. Because they do not attend to the service of the Lord, many of them, forsaken by the hand of God, turn toward the dangerous levities and distractions, which on account of their vileness, I do not wish thee to describe or consider, except to deplore them from thy heart, and to avert such displeasure and offense against God. But because I have a special reason to look with favor upon the inmates of thy convent, I wish that, in my name and by my authority, thou admonish and lovingly urge them always to live retired and dead to the world, with unbroken forgetfulness of all that passes within it, that among themselves their conversation be of heaven, and that above all they preserve intact the mutual peace and love to which I have exhorted thee so often. Letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verse 20. If they obey me in this, I offer them my protection, and I will constitute myself their mother, their help and defense, in the same way as I am thine, and I will also promise them my continual and efficacious intercession with my most holy Son, if they do not displease me. For this purpose, thou shouldest exhort them to continual love and devotion toward me, engrafting it in their hearts. In being thus faithful, they will attain all that thou wishest for them, and much more, for I will obtain it for them." in order that they may occupy themselves with joy and alacrity in preparing things for the divine worship, and gladly undertake all that pertains to it. Remind them of all that I did in the service of my most holy Son and of the temple. I desire thee to understand that the holy angels were full of admiration at the zeal, careful attention, and neatness with which I took charge of all that belonged to the service of my Son and Lord. All this loving and reverent anxiety caused me to prepare all that was necessary for his rearing up beforehand, so that I was never in want of anything necessary for clothing him and administering to his comfort, as some have thought. For my prudence and love would not permit any negligence or inadvertence in this regard. End of chapter 7 Book 2, Chapter 8 of The Mystical City of God, Volume 2, by the Venerable Sister Mary of Jesus of Agreda. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book 2, Chapter 8. The Edict of Caesar Augustus is published, commanding all subjects of the empire to registrate, 
and what St. Joseph did when he heard of it. It had been decreed by the immutable will of Providence that the only begotten of the Father should be born in the town of Bethlehem. Micah chapter 5 verse 2 And accordingly it had been foretold by the saints and prophets of foregone ages. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 9 for the decrees of the absolute will of God are infallible, and since nothing can resist them, Esther chapter 13 verse 9, sooner heaven and earth pass away than that they fail of accomplishment. Matthew chapter 24 verse 35. The fulfillment of this immutable decree the Lord secured by means of an edict of Caesar Augustus for the whole Roman Empire, ordering the registration or enumeration of all the world, as St. Luke says. Luke, chapter 2, verse 1. The Roman Empire at that time embraced the greater part of what was then known of the earth, and therefore they called themselves masters of the world, ignoring all the other nations. The object of this census was to make all the inhabitants acknowledge themselves as vassals of the emperor, and to pay a certain tax to their temporal lord. For this registration, everyone was to go to his native city in order to be inscribed. This edict was also proclaimed in Nazareth, and came to the hearing of St. Joseph while he was on some errand. He returned to his house in sorrowful consternation, and informed his heavenly spouse of the news which had spread about the concerning edict. The most prudent virgin answered, let not this edict of our temporal ruler cause thee any concern, my master and spouse, for all that happens to us is ordained by the Lord and King of heaven and earth, and in all events his providence will assist and direct us. Ecclesiasticus chapter 22 verse 28 Let us resign ourselves into his hands, and we shall not be disappointed. Most Holy Mary was capable of being entrusted with all the mysteries of her Most Holy Son, and she knew of the prophecies and their fulfillment. Hence also, that the only begotten of the Father and her own was to be born in Bethlehem, a stranger and an unknown. But she said nothing of this to St. Joseph, for without being commissioned by the Lord, she would reveal none of his secrets. All that she was not commanded to reveal, she concealed with admirable prudence, notwithstanding her desire of consoling her most faithful and holy spouse. She wished to entrust herself to his direction and arrangement, without acting the part of those who are wise in their own conceit, as wisdom warns us. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 7 They therefore conferred with each other about the course to be pursued, for already the pregnancy of the heavenly lady was far advanced, and her parturition was approaching. St. Joseph said, Queen of heaven and earth and my mistress, if thou hast no order to the contrary from the Almighty, it seems to be necessary that I go alone. Yet although this order refers only to the heads of families, I dare not leave thee without assistance, nor could I live without thee, nor would I have a moment's peace away from thee. For my heart could not come to any rest without seeing thee. Thy heavenly delivery is too imminent to ask thee to go with me to Bethlehem, whither this edict calls us, and I fear to place thee in any risk, as well on account of thy condition, as also on account of my poverty. If thy delivery should happen on the way, amid inconveniences, which I could not alleviate, I would be heartbroken. These are the anxious thoughts which trouble me. I pray thee, lady, Present them before the Most High, and beseech him to grant me my desire of not being separated from thee. His humble spouse obeyed St. Joseph, and although she was not ignorant of the divine will, yet she would not omit this act of obedience as a most submissive spouse. She presented to the Lord the fervent wishes of St. Joseph, and received the following answer. My dearest dove, yield to the wishes of my servant Joseph in what he proposes, accompany him on the journey. I shall be with thee, and I shall assist thee with paternal love, in the tribulations which thou shalt suffer for my sake. Although they shall be very great, my powerful arms will make thee come forth, glorious from all of them. Thy footsteps will be beautiful in my sight. Canticles chapter 7 verse 1. 
do not fear since this is my will then the lord gave the holy guardian angels in the presence of the heavenly mary a new and special command and precept that they serve her during this journey with particular care and solicitude as befitted the magnificent mysteries that should be transacted beside the thousand angels which served ordinarily as her guard the lord commanded other nine thousand to attend on their queen and mistress and serve as a guard of honor ten thousand strong from the first day of her journey this they did as most faithful servants of the lord as i shall say later on the great queen was renewed and strengthened with a new enlightenment for the troubles and tribulations which would be occasioned by the persecution of herod and other happenings at the birth of the infant god matthew chapter two verse sixteen her invincible heart being thus prepared she offered herself to the lord without any disquietude and gave thanks for all that he should choose to do and arrange in regard to these future events she returned from this heavenly interview to saint joseph and announced to him the will of the most high that she accede to his wishes and accompany him on his journey to bethlehem joseph was filled with new consolation and delight acknowledging the great favor conferred upon him by the right hand of the most high he gave thanks with fervent acts of gratitude and humility and addressing the heavenly spouse he answered my lady source of my happiness and good fortune the only cause of grief in this journey will now be the hardships which thou must undergo because i have no riches to procure thee the conveniences which i would like to furnish for thy pilgrimage but we shall find relations acquaintances and friends of our family in bethlehem i hope they will receive us hospitably and there thou canst rest from the exertions of the journey if the lord will dispose as i thy servant would wish thus the holy spouse saint joseph lovingly planned but the lord had already prearranged all things in a way unknown to him and therefore he experienced so much the greater bitterness of disappointment when all his loving expectations failed as we shall see most holy mary said nothing to saint joseph of what she knew the lord had decreed concerning the heavenly birth although she well knew that it would be different from what he expected she rather encouraged him saying my spouse and my master i accompany thee with much pleasure and we will make this journey as poor people in the name of the lord for the most high will not despise poverty which he came to seek with so much love relying on his protection and assistance in our necessities and labors we will proceed with confidence do thou my master place to his account all thy difficulties they at the same time resolved upon the day of their departure and joseph diligently searched in the town of nazareth for some beast of burden to bear the mistress of the world he could not easily find one because so many people were going to different towns in order to fulfill the requirements of the edict of the emperor but after much anxious inquiry saint joseph found an unpretentious little beast which if we can call such creatures fortunate was the most fortunate of all the irrational animals since it was privileged not only to bear the queen of all creation and the blessed fruit of her womb the king of kings and the lord of lords but afterwards to be present at his birth isaiah chapter one verse three and since it gave to its creator the homage denied to him by men as i shall relate they provided the articles for the journey which would last five days the outfit of the heavenly travellers was the same as that which they had provided for their previous journey to the house of zacharias on their visit to elizabeth they carried with them bread fruit and some fishes which ordinarily composed their nourishment as the most prudent virgin was enlightened regarding their protracted absence she made use of prudent concealment in taking along the linens and clothes necessary for her heavenly delivery for she wished to dispose all things according to the exalted intents of the lord and in preparation for the events which she expected their house they left in charge of some neighbor until they should return the day and hour for their departure for bethlehem arrived and because of the reverence with which the most faithful and fortunate joseph had begun to treat his sovereign spouse he diligently and anxiously sought to do all in his power to please her he besought her with great affection to make known to him all her wishes and to call his attention to all that he might forget 
in regard to her pleasure convenience and comfort or that might please the lord whom she bore in her womb the humble queen thanked him for his loving attention and referring to all the glory and service of her most holy son she consoled and animated him to meet courageously the hardships of the journey assuring him anew that the almighty was pleased with his affectionate solicitude she also informed him of the will of his majesty that they meet with patience and joy of heart the hardships of poverty on their way in order to begin her journey the empress of heaven knelt at the feet of saint joseph and asked him for his blessing although the man of god shrunk from such a request and strenuously objected on account of the dignity of his spouse she nevertheless remained victorious in her humility and prevailed upon him to give her his benediction saint joseph complied with great timidity and reverence and immediately cast himself at her feet in a flood of tears asking her to present him anew to her most holy son and obtain for him divine pardon and grace thus prepared they started from nazareth for bethlehem in midwinter which made the journey more painful and difficult but the mother of god who bore eternal life within her attended solely to the divine activities and colloquies of the lord observing him in the virginal chamber of her womb imitating him in his works and giving him more delight and honor than all the rest of creatures taken together instruction which most holy mary the queen vouchsafed me my daughter in all thy discourse on my life and in each of the chapters and mysteries so far rehearsed thou wilt find the admirable providence of the most high and his fatherly love toward me his humble servant although human capacity cannot fully penetrate and estimate the admirable works of such high wisdom yet it must venerate it with all its powers and must seek to participate in the favors which the lord showed me by striving to imitate me for mortals must not think that only for my sake and in me god wished to show himself as holy powerful and infinitely good it is certain that if any or all of the souls would entrust themselves to the direction and government of this lord they would soon experience that same fidelity punctuality and most sweet efficacy with which his majesty arranged all things that touched upon his honor and service in my life they would likewise taste those delightful and divine emotions which i felt in relying upon his most holy will nor would they fail to receive the abundance of his gifts which are enclosed as in an infinite ocean within his divinity and just as the waters of the ocean rush forth wherever they find a suitable opening so the graces and blessings of the lord overflow upon rational creatures when they are well disposed and do not hinder their course this truth is hidden to mortals because they do not stop to ponder and consider the works of the almighty i desire thee to study this truth to write it within thy heart and to learn from my own actions the secret workings of thy own interior so that thou understand what goes on within thee also that thou practice ready obedience and subjection to others always preferring the good counsels of others to thy own insight and judgment thou must carry this to such a point that in order to obey thy superiors and thy spiritual directors thou take no notice of what thou foreseest will happen contrary to their expectations just as i when i knew that what my holy spouse joseph expected would not happen on our journey to bethlehem and even when some equal or inferior command thee such things be silent and hide thy better foreknowledge perform all that is no sin or imperfection listen to all with attention and silence so that thou mayest learn in speaking be very slow and reserved for in this consists prudent and careful intercourse always bear in mind that thou ask the blessing of the lord for all that thou wishest to undertake in order that thou mayest not wander from what is pleasing to him whenever thou hast an opportunity ask also the permission and blessing of thy spiritual father and director so that thou mayest not fall short of the great merits and perfections in all thy works and in order that thou mayest also give me the pleasure which i desire of thee end of chapter eight book two chapter nine of the mystical city of god volume two 
by the venerable sister mary of jesus of agreda this librivox recording is in the public domain book two chapter nine the journey of most holy mary from nazareth to bethlehem in the company of the holy spouse joseph and of the holy guardian angels the most pure mary and the glorious saint joseph departed from nazareth for bethlehem alone poor and humble in the eyes of the world none of the mortals thought more of them than what was warranted by their poverty and humility but oh the wonderful sacraments of the most high hidden to the proud and unpenetrated by the wisdom of the flesh they did not walk alone poor or despised but prosperous rich and in magnificence they were most worthy of the immense love of the eternal father and most estimable in his eyes they carried with them the treasure of heaven the divinity itself the whole court of the celestial ministers venerated them all the inanimate beings recognized the living and true ark of the testament joshua chapter three verse sixteen more readily than the waters of the jordan recognized its type and shadow when they courteously laid open and free the path for its passage and for those that followed it they were accompanied by ten thousand angels which as mentioned were appointed by god himself as the servants of her majesty during that whole journey these heavenly squadrons marched along as their retinue in human forms visible to the heavenly lady more refulgent than so many suns she herself walked in their midst better guarded and defended than the bed of solomon surrounded by the six valiant ones of israel girded with their swords canticles chapter three verse seven besides these ten thousand angels there were many others who descended from heaven as messengers of the eternal father to his only begotten made man in his most holy mother and who ascended from earth as their ambassadors with messages and treaties from them to the heavenly father in the midst of this royal retinue hidden from the gaze of men most holy mary and joseph proceeded on their way secure that their feet would not be bruised by the stone of tribulation psalm forty verse twelve since the lord had commanded his angels to be their defence and watchfulness this command the most faithful ministers as vassals of their great queen fulfilled with wonder and delight seeing centred in a mere creature such great sacraments such perfections and immense treasures of the divinity and seeing in her all this distinction united to dignity and grace far exceeding their own angelic capacity they composed new songs in honour of the lord whom they saw reclining as the highest king of glory on his throne of gold canticles chapter three verse nine and in honour of the heavenly mother who was like his living and incorruptible chariot or like the fertile ear of corn of the promised land enclosing the living grain leviticus chapter twenty three verse ten or like the rich merchant ship which brings the grain to the house of bread in order that dying in the earth it might be multiplied for heaven john chapter twelve verse twenty four their journey lasted five days for on account of the pregnancy of his spouse saint joseph shortened each day's journey the sovereign queen experienced no darkness of night on the way for a few times when their travel extended beyond nightfall the holy angels spread about such effulgence as not all the lights of heaven in their noontide splendor would have thrown forth in the clearest heavens this light and vision of the angels also saint joseph enjoyed at those times then all of them together would form celestial choirs in which they and the two holy travellers alternated in singing wonderful hymns and canticles of praise converting the fields into new heavens during this whole journey the queen was rejoiced by the sight of her resplendent ministers and vassals and by the sweet interior conversation held with them with these wonderful favors and delights however the lord joined some hardships and inconveniences which the divine mother encountered on the way for the concourse of people in the taverns occasioned by the imperial edict was very disagreeable and annoying to the modest and retiring virgin mother and her spouse on account of their poverty and timid retirement they were treated with less hospitality and consideration than others especially the well-to-do for the world judges and usually confers its favors according to outward appearance and according to personal influence 
our holy pilgrims were obliged repeatedly to listen to sharp reprimands in the taverns at which they arrived tired out by their journey and in some of them they were refused admittance as worthless and despicable people several times they assigned to the mistress of heaven and earth some corner of the hallway while at others she did not fare even so well being obliged to retire with her husband to places still more humble and unbecoming in the estimation of the world but in whatever places she tarried how contemptible soever it might be considered the courtiers of heaven established their court around their supreme king and sovereign queen immediately they surrounded and enclosed them like an impenetrable wall securing the bridal chamber of solomon against the terrors of the night her most faithful spouse joseph seeing the mistress of heaven so well guarded by the angelic hosts betook himself to rest and sleep for to this she urged him on account of the hardships of travel she however continued her celestial colloquies with the ten thousand angels of her retinue solomon in the canticles describes in diverse metaphors and similitudes many great mysteries of the queen of heaven but in the third chapter he refers more particularly to what happened to the heavenly mother in her pregnancy and during this journey during this time was fulfilled to the letter all that is said of the couch of solomon canticles chapter three verse seven of his chariot and of his golden bed of the guard which was stationed around it enjoying the divine vision also all the other sayings which are contained in those prophecies what i have pointed out will suffice to make them understood and they should excite our admiration of the wonderful sacraments of god's activity for the good of man who is there among mortals whose heart is not softened or who is so proud as not to be abashed or so careless as not to be filled with wonder at such miraculous extremes the infinite and true god hidden and concealed in the virginal womb of a tender maiden full of grace and beauty innocent pure sweet pleasing and amiable in the eyes of god and of men surpassing all that the lord god has ever or shall ever create to see this great lady bearing the treasure of the divinity despised persecuted neglected and cast out by the blind ignorance and pride of the world and on the other hand while she is thus pushed aside into the last places to see her loved and esteemed by the triune god regaled by his caresses served by his angels revered defended and assisted with the greatest anxiety and watchfulness o children of men slow and hard of hearts psalm four verse three how deceitful are your ways and how erroneous is your judgment in esteeming the rich and despising the poor letter of st james chapter two verse two exalting the proud and humiliating the lowly applauding the braggarts and casting out the just blind is your choice and full of error your judgment and you will find yourselves frustrated in all your desires ambitiously you seek riches and treasures and you find yourself in poverty beating the air if you had received the true ark of god you would have been blessed by the hand of the almighty like obedadom second book of kings chapter six verse eleven but because you have treated it unworthily many of you have experienced the punishment of oza the heavenly lady observed and knew the secrets of the different souls of those she met penetrating into the very thoughts and conditions of each whether of grace or of guilt in their different degrees concerning many souls she also knew whether they were predestined or reprobate whether they would persevere fall or again rise up all this variety of insight moved her to exercise heroic virtues as well in regard to the ones as to the others for many of them she obtained the grace of perseverance for others efficacious help to rise from their sin to grace for others again she prayed to the lord with affectionate tears feeling intensest sorrow for the reprobate though she did not pray as efficaciously for them many times worn out by these sorrows much more than by the hardships of travel the strength of her body gave way on such occasions the holy angels full of refulgent light and beauty bore her up in their arms in order that she might rest and recuperate the sick afflicted and indigent whom she met on the way she consoled and assisted by asking her most holy son to come to their aid in their necessities and adversities 
she kept herself silently aloof from the multitude preoccupied with the fruit of her divine pregnancy which was already evident to all such was the return which the mother of mercy made for the inhospitality of mortals for the greater reproach of human ingratitude it happened also that once during these wintry days they reached a stopping place in the midst of a cold rain and snowstorm for the lord did not spare them this inconvenience and they were obliged to take shelter in the stables of the animals because the owners would not furnish better accommodation the irrational beasts showed them the courtesy and kindness which was refused by their human fellow beings for they retreated in reverence at the entrance of their maker and of his mother who carried him in her virginal womb it is true the queen of creation could command the winds the frost and the snow not to inconvenience her but she would not give such a command in order not to deprive herself of suffering in imitation of her most holy son even before he came forth into the world therefore the inclemencies of the weather affected her to a certain extent the faithful saint joseph however did his utmost to shield her and still more did the holy angels seek to protect her especially the holy prince michael who remained at the right side of his queen without leaving her even for a moment several times when she became tired he led her by the arm along the way whenever the lord permitted he also shielded her against the weather and performed many other services for the holy queen and the blessed fruit of her womb jesus thus variously and wonderfully assisted our travellers arrived at the town of bethlehem at four o'clock of the fifth day a saturday as it was at the time of the winter solstice the sun was already sinking and the night was falling they entered the town and wandered through many streets in search of a lodging-house or inn for staying overnight they knocked at the doors of their acquaintances and nearer family relations but they were admitted nowhere and in many places they met with harsh words and insults the most modest queen followed her spouse through the crowds of people while he went from house to house and from door to door although she knew that the hearts and the houses of men were to be closed to them and also to expose her state at her age to the public gaze was more painful to her modesty than their failure to procure a night lodging she nevertheless wished to obey saint joseph and suffer this indignity and unmerited shame while wandering through the streets they passed the office of the public registry and they inscribed their names and paid the fiscal tribute in order to comply with the edict and not to be obliged to return they continued their search betaking themselves to other houses but having already applied at more than fifty different places they found themselves rejected and sent away from them all the heavenly spirits were filled with astonishment at these exalted mysteries of the most high which manifested the patience and meekness of his virgin mother and the unfeeling hardness of men at the same time they blessed the almighty in his works and hidden sacraments since from that day on he began to exalt and honor poverty and humility among men it was nine o'clock at night when the most faithful joseph full of bitter and heart-rending sorrow returned to his most prudent spouse and said my sweetest lady my heart is broken with sorrow at the thought of not only not being able to shelter thee as thou deservest and as i desire but in not being able to offer thee even any kind of protection from the weather or a place of rest a thing rarely or never denied to the most poor and despised in the world no doubt heaven in thus allowing the hearts of men to be so unmoved as to refuse us a night lodging conceals some mystery i now remember lady that outside the city walls there is a cave which serves as a shelter for shepherds and their flocks let us seek it out perhaps it is unoccupied and we may there expect some assistance from heaven since we receive none from men on earth the most prudent virgin answered my spouse and my master let not thy kindest heart be afflicted because the ardent wishes which the love of thy lord excites in thee cannot be fulfilled since i bear him in my womb let us i beseech thee give thanks for having disposed events in this way the place of which thou speakest shall be most satisfactory to me let thy tears of sorrow be turned into tears of joy and let us lovingly embrace poverty which is the inestimable and precious treasure of my most holy son he came from heaven in order to seek it let us then afford him an occasion to practise it in the joy of our souls certainly i cannot be better delighted than to see thee procure it for me 
let us go gladly wherever the lord shall guide us the holy angels accompanied the heavenly pair brilliantly lighting up the way and when they arrived at the city gate they saw that the cave was forsaken and unoccupied full of heavenly consolation they thanked the lord for this favor and then happened what i shall relate in the following chapter instruction which the most holy mary the queen of heaven gave me my dearest daughter if thou art of a meek and docile heart these mysteries which thou hast written about and hast understood will stir within thee sweet sentiments of love and affection toward the author of such great wonders i wish that bearing them in mind thou from this day on embrace with new and great esteem the contempt and neglect of the world and tell me dearest if in exchange for this forgetfulness and scorn of the world god look upon thee with eyes of sweetest love why shouldst thou not buy so cheaply what is worth an infinite price what can the world give thee even when it esteems thee and exalts thee most and what dost thou lose if thou despise it is its favor not all vanity and deceit psalm four verse three is it not all a fleeting and momentary shadow which eludes the grasp of those that haste after it hence if thou hast all worldly advantage in thy possession what great feat would it be to despise it as of no value consider how little thou dost in rejecting all of it for the love of god for mine and that of the holy angels and if the world does not neglect thee as much as thou shouldest desire do thou on thy own behalf despise it in order to remain free and unhampered to enjoy to the full extent the highest good with the plentitude of his most delightful love and intercourse my most holy son is such a faithful lover of souls that he has set me as the teacher and living example of the love of humility and true contempt of worldly vanity and pride he ordained also for his own glory as well as for my sake that i his servant and mother should be left without shelter and be turned away by mortals in order that afterwards his beloved souls might be so much the more readily induced to offer him a welcome thus obliging him by an artifice of love to come and remain with them he also sought destitution and poverty not because he had any need of them for bringing the practice of virtues to the highest perfection but in order to teach mortals the shortest and surest way for reaching the heights of divine love and union with god thou knowest well my dearest that thou hast been incessantly instructed and exhorted by divine enlightenment to forget the terrestrial and visible and to gird thyself with fortitude proverbs chapter thirty one verse seventeen to raise thyself to the imitation of me copying in thyself according to thy capacity the works and virtues manifested to thee in my life this is the very first purpose of the knowledge which thou hast receivest in writing this history for thou hast in me a perfect model and by it thou canst arrange the converse and conduct of thy life in the same manner as i arranged mine in imitation of my sweetest son the dread with which this command to imitate me has inspired thee as a being above thy strength thou must moderate and thou must encourage thyself by the words of my most holy son in the gospel of saint matthew be ye perfect as my heavenly father is perfect matthew chapter five verse forty eight this command of the most high imposed upon his holy church is not impossible of fulfillment and if his faithful children on their part dispose themselves properly he will deny to none of them the grace of attaining this resemblance to the heavenly father all this my most holy son has merited for them but the degrading forgetfulness and neglect of men hinder them from maturing within themselves the fruits of his redemption of thee particularly i expect this perfection and i invite thee to it by the sweet law of love which accompanies my instruction ponder and scrutinize by the divine light the obligation under which i place thee and labor to correspond with it like a faithful and anxious child let no difficulty or hardship disturb thee nor deter thee from any virtuous exercise no matter how hard it may be nor be content with striving after the love of god and salvation of thyself alone if thou wouldest be perfect in imitating me and fulfilling all that the gospel teaches thou must work for the salvation of other souls and the exaltation of the holy name of my son making thyself an instrument in his powerful hands 
for the accomplishment of mighty works to advance his pleasure and glory. End of chapter 9